I'm Gary Moore. I'm a consultant biomedical scientist in haemostasis and thrombosis at Guy's and St Thomas's NHS Trust in London. Right from a young age, I had an absolute fascination for animals and biology. Um, I would have loved David Attenborough's job, but that still isn't vacant. Um, so I, I wanted something that was involved in uh, biology and science. Um, and my mum found an advert in our local paper from the Hospital for Sick Children in Great Ormond Street in London, who was looking for a, a junior uh, scientist at the time to go and rotate through the four main laboratories um, as part of the training to be able to choose which to specialise in at a later date. So that's, that's how I found laboratories. I mean, what appealed was the fact that it was using the science that I'd studied at school at a, what was then O-levels um, and A-levels so that I could have a job in science, and this was particularly human biology, um, which I found interesting. I was very lucky. I, I got to visit microbiology, haematology, and biochemistry to get an idea of what was involved in each lab. And the discipline that hit me straight away as absolutely fascinating was haematology. A lot of that was down to the fact that you, you could actually see the disease itself. You could look down the microscope and if somebody's got leukaemia, if they've got an anemia, if they've even got malarial parasites, it's sitting there right in front of you. And it was all the things you'd learned at, at O level and A level, they, they were sitting there um, right in front of you and, and you were often the first person to discover them in an individual patient. Absolutely fascinating. My lab um, operates in a subspecialty of haematology. We're probably the largest haemostasis laboratory in the UK, um, looking and di at diagnosing and monitoring diseases of blood coagulation, uh, where patients can either have problems with bleeding too much or having a thrombosis. Um, so the lab is split up into two main areas. One of them is doing what we would refer to as routine screening tests, just having an overall look at um, the coagulation function. Um, but um, we have a much larger laboratory that is allied to the largest haemophilia centre in the UK, um, where we will specifically um, do laboratory assays that will identify specific proteins um, that are either dysfunctional or missing that will predispose a patient to either bleeding symptoms or thrombotic symptoms. Um, funnily enough, these days, the one thing I don't do is put on a lab coat and, and, and work in the laboratory. Um, I don't get the fun of playing with all the update equipment anymore. My, my job is split into three main areas. Um, one of them is ostensibly, if you like, the consultancy where I'm available for advice and contributing to sort of the more complex diagnostic procedures. Very often in haemostasis, you generate a whole raft of, of numbers and you, you have to sort of put them together in a jigsaw. Um, t to find out what the final answer may or may not be. And very often, and one of the reasons that I find haemostasis interesting is that you have to look at the raw data and understand the science of how you generated the result before you can actually understand what the result might or might not mean. So I contribute to the complex diagnostic procedures, which is very challenging and interesting. Um, another area of which I'm passionate about is teaching. Um, I do quite a lot of teaching. I'm also the chief examiner in haematology for the Institute of Biomedical Science. Um, so I, I teach the lab staff at undergraduate and postgraduate level, and I also run some tutorials for the medical staff who are studying for their consultant exams. And the other arm of my work, uh, which is a fantastic privilege to be able to be involved in, is I get to do my own research and development. It's all in the context of improving the diagnostic process. So I've got three main arms, uh, diagnostics, teaching and R&D. Um, I think initially uh, the fact that there's so much to learn and, and the fact even here I am nearly 30 years later still learning and I hope I'm going to be learning right until I retire, if not beyond that. Uh, the, the pace of change is, is phenomenal. There's always something new to learn, whether it's 
in terms of technology or, or theory uh, behind the practice. Um, so I, I think they're, they're the main things. Uh, and also I think, certainly when I first arrived, how much direct impact your work can have on a patient and, and, and their stay in hospital. Uh, you know, that, that obviously makes it very rewarding as well. Even though you are one of the backroom boys, you still have a direct impact. Uh, again, the highlight certainly initially w w was the fascination. I just absolutely loved learning about, about haematology um, and all aspects of it. Um, from a professional point of view, t to later, much later, go on and publish my own research papers and, and now my own textbook, not just mine, obviously, along, along with colleagues as well. They have been absolutely fantastic. You really, really feel you've achieved something. Um, <laughs> low lights, um, I think I, I have to mention m my big bugbear, and that's the insatiable and ever-increasing demand for bureaucracy in today's workplace. You're forever filling in forms and repeating information here, there and everywhere because apparently it's necessary. I hate it. I think the obvious answer to that question um, is, is the large amount of automation that's available now. Techniques I used to do manually when I first started the profession um, can, are now done by very large, uh, very sophisticated robotic automated analyzers and they're absolutely essential um, in today's uh, laboratories where the workload is getting higher and higher. Um, but in terms of knowledge, certainly within my own area, there's been a number of, of Im very important uh, discoveries. The one that springs to mind is Factor V Leiden, <coughs> which is a, a major, probably one of the most common risk factors for thrombosis. And when something like that gets discovered in the research arena, you end up having to add a whole raft of new tests and new types of tests to your repertoire in order to be able to diagnose them um, on a routine basis. So yeah, that's happening all the time. The main challenges now are, are keeping up to date um, and again learning new techniques, learning how to operate new equipment, learn and very importantly learning the science behind the new techniques because as is so often important you need to understand how you generate the results in order to be able to understand what they really mean because some, you know, sometimes there may be interferences in, in the way an, 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 an assay is designed and you have to be aware of all these things. That's, that's what turns our job into more than just being a technician. You have to be a scientist in order to understand the results um, and interpret them. Um, so that the challenge is, is keeping up to date from both a knowledge point of view and, and a technology point of view. Um, I, I think the future is, is potentially very exciting. Um, on the one hand, the, the automation to an extent has de-skilled parts of the job, uh, which it was always inevitable. Um, and there are moves now to employ people at a practitioner grade who will be largely employed ostensibly to do what this profession was a hundred years ago and, and be more so technicians than scientists um, to operate the robotic equipment. Um, but for the people who remain as scientists, um, the exciting challenge for them is the fact that their jobs will become a lot more interesting. You will, you will concentrate less on generating the numbers using the automated equipment and concentrating on the science in terms of doing R&D and contributing more and more um, to the diagnostic process. So I think in the future the science is actually going to have a, a, a greater uh, or form a greater part of the job than it, than it does already and I, I personally find that uh, very rewarding and fascinating and exciting.